unable to process the events that had just occurred, I wandered disoriented with a single image in my mind of the monster that I saw reflected in the window. I immediately understood it to be non-human. But it wasn't until later that I realized. That it was my own reflection. The mask. I must have carried it off without thinking. That mask, which I became interested in only by chance, was the entire reason for my pursuit of archaeology. It was almost like a substitute for my mother. With Erina and Danny gone, I immersed myself in it as a way of shutting out my desolation. To think that I, with my own body, would come to know its effects. Back there, I nearly killed Dio. My whole body filled with repulsive sensation. The thirst for human blood. Why? My body. With these hands, I... Dio. The sun's coming up. The rain stopped, too. <laughs> this pain! It... It burns! It's... It's the light of the sun. Oh my god. It's just like... Something I used to read about in novels. I'm a vampire. What on earth is this mask? That Dio wanted me dead. The fear of what I'd become. The mystery of that mask. And the intense thirst that filled my body. Unable to wrap my head around it all, I fought with all my might just to retain my sanity. Father. Dio! Why would Dio want to kill me? Did he want to be the only heir? Was I in the way? The police are here. They're probably trying to figure out how I went missing. No one knows what happened that night. No one but myself and Dio. If... if I went inside and told them, I could tell them about what Dio did to me! How Dio tried to kill me! What's the use? How could I explain it to them? How could I explain the way I crave blood? And the way my flesh is scalded by the sunlight. How could I tell my father that his son has become a monster? Even if they believed me, how can I be sure that I wouldn't do to father what I tried to do to Dio? Father. Everyone. I'm right here. This mask. I've got to find out more about it. It's my only hope of returning to normal. I'll be back here someday. Back to my home.
London, six months later. Excuse me, but it's actually closing time. Hmm? Oh, my apologies. We open our doors at nine in the morning. I see. I'll come back then. No leads here either. <laughs> when the sun is down, Jonathan can move about as a human. But it simply isn't enough time. Unable to turn up a single valuable bit of information, he wastes another day in fruitless search. However, in the past six months, Jonathan has come to better understand his new body. Even though based on his age, he should be in the midst of a growth spurt, his old clothes fit as perfectly as ever, even after half a year. And while small scrapes and bruises disappear in a blink, wounds caused by the sun's rays do not heal. Uh, come in. Excuse me, sir, but will you be dining with us tonight? Oh, I ate while I was out, so I'll decline. Got it. Furthermore, he does not require food or water. His body desires one thing only. When he does eat and drink, it does nothing to stop the waves of ravenous hunger that besiege him. I think I've reached my limit. When he finds himself unable to control his urges, he has no recourse but to escape to an unpopulated place. His body is undying. The amount of time I can keep my pangs under control has been getting shorter lately. With things as they are, I can't even get any research done. I can ride out the pain by going to sleep, but still. How long do I have to keep this up? Moreover, how long can I? There's no telling whether I'll be able to restrain myself forever. I can't even say for sure that a way to return to normal exists. The day may come when my soul becomes as warped as my body. This may have been a fool's errand from the very beginning. I suppose it wouldn't be bad to see the sun one last time before I go. No, I mustn't give up. The solution to this mask's riddle is out there. I know it. There's hope of turning back yet. I can't let myself waver. Mother, Danny, please lend me strength. Hey, boss! Speed wagon, sir! We've got one! Eh? What is it this time? Some poor bastard passed out in the middle of the off street over that way. Now, that's something you don't see every day. All right, boys. Let's show them how we run things around here. London, a corner of the city where anything goes, known by some as Ogre Street. His head's all covered in frost. It looks like this one died before we got here. Ugh. Now that I get a closer look, he's just a kid. Doesn't look bad off either. 
How'd he wind up in a rat hole like this? Wait just a minute. Nah, he couldn't be. Huh? Whoa! I was sure this guy was dead! I'm sorry about this. This isn't your fault. You were just looking for valuables. Um... Hey, boss. Everything okay over there? Uh, hold up, kid. Uh, give me a minute. Please, forgive me. I beg you. He's, he's way too strong for someone his size. <laughs> How'd you like them apples, you brat? Now get your palms off the boss. A knife. <laughs> Blood. That was uncalled for. He's just a kid for crying out loud. The scent of blood extinguished my sense of reason. I remember desperately pleading with the part of myself that was still human. Hey, kid! Saying... Don't go.